Recently I got a question here on my channel which I understood as follows. Why aren't you using auto-completions? Why aren't you using a text editor which, is, which has more built-in functions like Visual Studio Code so you can have auto-completions or automatically generate comments for you? So why are you using Wim here? And of course I don't want to start a new text editor war, but I felt the need of at least comment the comment a little bit. So that's what this video is about. But before I start, I have a very important disclaimer for you. So when you're seeing me doing my tutorials, this is not my normal developing flow I have when creating a Linux driver. Because, okay, so even if I do normal Linux driver development, I also use Wim. I just have some more features enabled, for example, line numbers and relative numbers, because relative numbers are really cool if you need to copy and paste lines of code around in your text file. This is what makes Wim really awesome, in my opinion. And the second thing which is different from when I'm doing the tutorials is normally I have opened the sources of the Linux kernel in a separate window. And most of the time I even have them opened in a browser window. So I'm using Bootlin's web page to show me the sources of the Linux kernel because this web page has a very, very handy feature. You can browse the various versions of the Linux kernel here on the side menu because the Linux kernel API keeps changing quite a lot and it's not 100% stable. So some functions are removed from time to time, some interfaces changed. So the Linux kernel API is changing and evolving. For example, the API from kernel to user space is extremely stable and most of the time always backwards compatible if new features are added. But the API in the kernel itself, it's changing. And so when I'm developing a driver, I look for a similar sample driver. For example, here we have the driver I have contributed to the Linux kernel. So this is a driver um, which converts an HID USB endpoint to a GPIO bridge. And when I was developing this driver, I used this driver here as a template. So this chip is also using the USB HID protocol and it also gives me a GPIO um, or also give me some more GPIO so I could take this code here, take a look at it and copy stuff of this code into my driver and then just modify it to my needs. Because the thing is, if you're writing a Linux driver, the chances are very, very good that there is already a similar driver available in the Linux kernel, which you can use as a template. Okay. But back to my tutorials. Another thing which is different when I'm doing the tutorials is I have prepared the tutorials already. This means I have already typed the code once because I want to test it out to make sure everything I want to show you is actually working. And I also take notes of the most important parts or the most important functions on a piece of paper. I know this is quite old school, but yeah, that's the way I'm doing it. And if I don't remember anything which doesn't um, happen too often because I memorize the code because I've typed it a few minutes or hours ago. But if I forget something, I can just take a look at the piece of paper and then I know again what function I need. So I think when I'm doing the tutorials, I hope it looks quite fluent for you. Yes. <laughs> okay. And another cool thing about when you're editing something in Wimis, so let's open a driver this one, for example, here in Wim, you're really just focusing on the source code. For example, if you are using Visual Studio Codium, which is also a great editor, you are distracted by a lot of things. So you have this top menu, you have side menus, maybe you have the terminal opened, and you have only a few space left for the um, or screen left for viewing the actual sources. Of course, you can get rid of the menus and stuff like that, but here on Wim you really just have the code, you can focus on the code and you can focus on my explanations. And also with Visual Studio Codium, if you're opening something and detect, ah, it's a C file, you haven't installed the C plugin yet, you're also getting pop-ups which can also distract you. So when using Wim, I think there is lesser chance of being distracted, you can focus more on what you are really doing. Okay, and then the second point of criticism was 
Wim is not you, or the missing autocompletion function. But hey, Wim has autocompletion by default, and this is what I want to show you in the remaining minutes here of this video. So let's create a new file in the temp folder so it's deleted after reboot, and let's name it test.c. So let me include standard io.h, and now let me type print, and I want to complete it to printf, then all I have to do is I have to press Ctrl and N. And voila, I have auto-completion it, auto-completed printf for me. Or for example here, I want to auto-complete F close, once again, Ctrl N, and now it's giving me more options. So maybe I mean F close here, but I can could also um, want to use F close all. And the way I can cycle through this option is by controlling Ctrl N again. Or if I want to cycle backwards, I can use Ctrl P. And if it doesn't appear in my list, here I also have what I have originally typed. But now let's say I want to use F close here. Then I have auto completion. And by default, this is working great for your normal system headers when you're not doing normal user space C programming. But we're doing kernel development. So let's try if this auto completion also works for kernel headers. So let's include Linux slash um, file system here. And in here we should have the struct file operation. But now if I type Ctrl N, it can't auto complete for me. It haven't found the pattern. And the reason for this is because the path in which it's searching for headers are just um, my current path, the dot, and user include, where we have most of our user space headers. So, but I have to change this path to the kernel headers. So where can I find the kernel headers? Well, I can find them here in my Raspberry Pi under user, source, Linux, headers, and then the kernel version, and here in this common RP um, folder. So let me copy this, and here we have an include folder, and in this include folder, for example, we have linux slash filesystem.h available. So I could just copy this path here, open my test.c again, and now I will set the path to my current path and to this path containing the kernel headers. And now if I try to auto-complete the file operations, I just press Ctrl N again. Okay. Little, little dip. Okay, maybe let's forget about this. I have to be in edit mode, sorry. <laughs> um, I just press Ctrl N again, then it searches through all the headers and it's giving me auto completions. And once again, here I can cycle through it with Ctrl N and Ctrl P. Yeah, so I need the file operations here. Cool, but one bad thing is, this path here can change if you have updated to a newer version of the kernel, for example. And al always manually pasting it in is not very efficient. But you can automate this by using a WimRC. So here, for example, I have a kernel WimRC, and in here I'm setting the path to the kernel's headers automatically, and then I also enable some more options which can be handy. For example, here with set text width, I'm setting the text width to 80 characters, so no line exceeds this 80 character limit, which yeah is part of the Linux kernel coding dial guidelines. But I think nowadays it's 120 or 125. Yeah, never mind. Here with here I'm activating line numbers and relative line numbers. This law status equals two gives me a bottom bar in which I can see my current file name. And here I'm activating syntax highlighting, auto indent and smart indent. And if I want to use this configuration, I can use vim minus u and then just give it the path to my config. And then let's open temp test.c again. And for example, let me include one more header, linux slash module.h. And now, for example, if I'm looking for the module init function, I can press Ctrl N again, let's search through the functions, and now, yeah, it finds my desired function or macro name. Yeah, pretty handy. 
but if you don't always want to source it, what you can use is you can create an alias, maybe in your bash RC or your um, yeah other shell RC. So I will name this kvim. And if I'm executing kvim, it should execute vim minus u and sourcing the configuration. And now if I type kvim temp test.c, hey, I have started vim set up for kernel programming and yes i should also be able to search for macros yep so here we have quite a bit of macros but yeah auto completion is working if you want to have it cool but yeah of course this is just whim without using of any plugins of course there are a lot of plugins available so if you want to have a more IDE style room experience, I'm quite sure there are plugins available which gives you exactly this experience. Yeah, so I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. Now, I would be very curious how you're doing kernel development, so please let me know in the comments down below which text editor are you using. Are you using Wim, Emacs, Get It, Nano, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio Code? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee and buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.